Hi, everybody. <clears throat> In this slightly extended uh, episode, uh, I work on the skins and riveted some skins on myself, and it's a uh, it's pretty exciting. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I'm just uh, finishing up with the filing and the deburring of the other skin. By the looks of it, I would say that's the right. And I mean, it's so pretty. My god, Vans does such a good job. Overall, it's like 99.95 out of 100 so far. That plastic tee, you lost 0.001% with the plastic tee. So there's both, uh, or there's one of the pieces. Uh, rivet, uh, rivet it on, Clico it on. So uh, as you can see, I've got the right side on. Um... And the way that I approach riveting this, I've got the entire thing turned on inside, and I have it clamped down. Oh, geez, get back to work. Right, I'm just going to speed that up for a while. So I have, uh, I have it clamped down on its side, as you can see, and I have all of the rivets in the side just off the edge of the workbench. Uh, just enough room so that when I put my bucking bar flush against the side of the workbench, it's perfectly in line, it's perfectly centered to where the rivet is, with a little, which I think is just a little bonus there. And so now that it's clamped down, everything works. Now since the rudder horns are riveted on into the back, they aren't perfectly flat, which is good because you don't want your rudder cables being slammed into the side of your empennage either. So it's good that those uh, horns are there. However, Clamping that directly to the desk uh, would be a no-no, so I actually have a couple of pieces of 3 8 inch uh, plywood underneath the tail section, underneath the aft part of the uh, tail cone, and it kind of pushes it up and keeps it from, uh, from letting the rudder cable do any damage or anything else. Oh, great. And so apparently I've left for the night... And I left my thing running. All right, let's just go ahead and speed this up. I'm pretty sure I must come back later. Five, six, no, I don't think I am. All right, let's speed speed this thing up. Sorry about that, folks. One thing I will say about this little camera I've got, so when it's recording this at night, this all comes out to about seven megs per hour, which is pretty cool. Okay, there we go. So there's a few rivets that you don't... Uh, there's a couple places in the very back corner there that you don't rivet. Uh, 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 a nut plate's going to go there for the fairing attachment later. It doesn't really say anything in the chapter at the time, so I just don't do it. Uh, now, the ones that go all the way down, those use uh, size 4s, and all the ones uh, going up like the ones I'm doing right now, those all use three and a halfs. Uh, one thing I will say about the way that I've been riveting this section in, and I'm very proud of this, is that I'm actually I'm actually back riveting the whole thing. So if you look, I actually have the back rivet attachment to my uh, buck, uh, to my rivet gun right there, and I'm just using my uh, uh, tungsten bucking bar as kind of the back riveting surface. I'll tell you what, when you're doing this, when you're doing one-man riveting operations, this is this is not actually bad. I may start adopting this whenever I get a chance. If you have a free hand wherever your uh, machine head's going to be, which which I admit is rare. Most of the time, machine heads are always on the inside, and you don't have a lot of room. But here I can do it. Uh, if, if you've got the room, back riveting it is nice, because you basically control it at the machine head level. Or you can just rivet it, immediately pull up that tiny little bucking head from the uh, from there, and actually see what the progress is, and then go back if you need a little bit more. So I thought a little interesting camera angle wouldn't hurt. And here I'm trying to get into a flow. It's the same thing. Remove Clico, grab rivet, place rivet into hole, see if it holds on its own. 
If it's going to fall out, then you need to have the bucking bar in the same hand and then slide it over the rivet while removing your other hand, which has a glove on it, which usually means snapping a finger. Then pick up the rivet gun, place it on the other side, push down on the rivet, make sure that the rivet can come out, but it's still attached hard as you're pushing on both the bucking bar and the rivet gun. Uh, you make sure that the uh, bucking bar is square. You can kind of just feel by wiggling it which way it is and then pull the trigger and then do it all over again and so there we go the right top skin is riveted on well all except for that one I forgot there was one more I'd forgotten Anyway, uh, that does it for the left, uh, right skin. I'm about to mount the left skin. I'm not going to actually work on it because once I put that skin on and I realize that this thing is real and, you know, that thing is large, I start freaking out because I'm going to have to put that somewhere. I'm going to have to reorganize the entire hangar because I've got to I got to be able to put that somewhere where I can get to it. I don't know, hang it from the ceiling? I don't, I don't know. Suggestions, I never say, uh, suggestions are welcome. If anyone has an idea of how I can store that damn thing. Uh, the basement ain't doing it, so. Anyway, in the next video, we should be riveting on that uh, top left skin, so I'll uh, see you soon.